Welcome back. I'm Shane. This is Relative Time. And today, once again, we're going to be talking about Aragon watches. And this time, it's with the slightly smaller Divemaster 4 Evo. With a sale price of 169 this is one of those watches that seem almost too good to be true. It has pretty much everything you want in a great budget diver. Seiko movement, sapphire crystal, a pretty good bracelet, and even a ceramic bezel. So if you're a bargain hunter, this is definitely one to pay attention to. But this is also a review that requires a little bit of a backstory, so stay with me here. And I think this is especially important if you're not familiar with Aragon. As Aragon is one of, if not the original micro brand. I think they date back to the early 90s when they were originally Android watches. So they were a micro brand before being a micro brand was even a thing. And they were an Android before that was even synonymous with cell phones. Now these days they're known as Aragon watches and they've probably grown out of being a micro brand as they have amassed quite a following. But over the years, they've been known for three main things, a lot of value, bold designs, and larger watches. And that last one is kind of key here, and that was true until recently. Now, normally most Aragons are gonna be found in the 45 to 50 millimeter range, but over the last year, they've been introducing some slightly smaller models, one of which I covered at the beginning of the year and was quite impressed with it. It is very similar specs to this one, and it was an amazing watch for the price. Now, in the past, I've bought all the Aragon watches I've reviewed, but evidently they caught a hold of that last review and the owner Wing himself emailed me and asked if I'd like to check out one of their new releases. Since I was so impressed with the 42 mm Dive Master, I immediately agreed to check out this one. And for the sake of transparency, this watch was given to the channel by Aragon and as far as I know, they're not gonna be asking for it back, hence that promotional tag. Now that said, let's dive into the Dive Master. So for this one, Aragon decided to go just a little bit smaller than their typical watches. And as such, you're looking at a width of 43 millimeters and a lug to lug of 50. Typically, I prefer a lug to lug of 48, so this is just a tad longer than that. But there is this fairly aggressive curvature to the lugs, and that does compensate a bit, as well as it does reduce any overhang on my 7 and a quarter inch wrist. Now, if you prefer smaller watches, I'm sure you're concerned with how this wears, but I gotta say, it's not bad. I think it wears exactly like you'd expect for a 43 millimeter diver. However, it is a touch tall at 14 millimeters, and I think that is apparent when you look at it from the side profile. It's also a bit hefty. Even with a couple of links removed, it's still over 200 grams on its bracelet. It's not so heavy that it ever really becomes an issue, but I think it is hefty enough that you notice it when you put it on. And to be fair here, this is typical of Aragon watches, as I think Wing designs them to have a really large presence that stands out boldly. And at this point, that's what the fan base expects, so you can't really fault them too much for that. And when it comes to presence, I gotta say the Evo has it in spades. In large part, it's due to its bezel, as it's just a little bit wider than the watch at 45 millimeters. And this is something that I think Wing and Aragon were really smart to do in the design. I really like the smaller 42 millimeter Dive Master, and I think that may be one of the best entry level watches out there. But in retrospect, I don't think it really reminds me of the style that Aragon is known for. So here with that 45 millimeter bezel, you are getting that larger than life presence that Aragon is known for in a slightly smaller package that is more accessible. Although for those that still want a larger version, there is a 48 millimeter version also available. Now, rounding out the specs, you're also looking at a 22 millimeter lug width, Seiko NH35A movement, flat sapphire crystal with AR, a fair amount of super luminova, and topping it all off, you have a ceramic insert in the bezel, which should offer better scratch resistance over your typical aluminum insert. When it comes to the case, the Evo has a fairly simple design and finish, so don't expect any beveled edges or high polished areas. Rather, this is just a straightforward, all brush, tool like finish. The overall design reminds me kind of a little bit of a Seiko Samurai mixed with an SKX, where you do have the sign screw down crown at the fore, which has nice knurling that matches the bezel, and because of that and its size, it's always easy to use. The Aragon logo on the crown is also loomed up, which is always a cool touch when the lights go out. Now, we've already talked about how the bezel is a little wider than the case. And I think when you combine that with the black ceramic insert, it gives the watch a very noticeable presence. But the width also makes it very easy to use. It is a little bit stiff when you turn it, but otherwise it's a pretty good bezel. 
It's 120 click, unidirectional, with just a slight hint of backplay. And that brings us to the dial. Now, as far as I know, there are gonna be five different colorways to pick from, including a mother of pearl version. From the images, it looks like some of the colorways will have more of a sunburst dial, but with this one, we have a very bright yellow flat dial. And to say that this thing is eye-catching, I think is an understatement. This yellow is hard to miss. Yellow divers have never been quite as popular as blue or black versions, but they've been around for a while and have their own particular kind of cool, and especially for those that want something a little fun during the summer. The overall dial design is pretty straightforward. The indices are a combination of dashes and dots, which we've seen time and time again. And here they are surrounded by a minimalist chapter ring, which is painted on in black. But how the indices are done here is something a little different. Aragon refers to this as a 3D hour index. And rather than your standard painted on indice or applied indices that they're then filled with luminous paint, this one seems to be made entirely of a polymer material that's coming straight out of the dial. It almost looks like the indices are 3D printed right on top of the dial. Or perhaps the dial is made more like a sandwich dial where there's an upper layer with cutouts and then a lower dial which has these taller indices that are then pushed through. Either way, it's very interesting, and one of the most interesting parts is that the luminous material is put right into the polymer. There's also a great amount of height to each of these, and that gives the watch a very interesting sense of depth, as well as creating a very effective crosshair effect, as where the cardinal points are the longer bars. And as tall as they are, that just helps to draw your eyes right to the center of the dial. There's also enough loom in that polymer that there's always a slight greenish tint to the indices, which matches the loom on the hands nicely, and I think it helps to visually offset them from the yellow dial. Although, even with that, they do tend to blend into the background a little. Which is why I think Aragon was really smart to add the black outline to the hands. As with that, they're always easy to make out and read. Now, overall, it's a very effective, simple, clean, straightforward design. Yet, there are a few things that I'm not too keen on. The first of which is the handset. Now, I think the design is good, but the hands are way too short for this dial. Especially the hour hand when it lines up to the circular indices, and the second hand which doesn't even go out to the chapter ring. I think the thinner hands help to give the design a rather clean feel, but their shortness almost makes them look like they were made for a smaller watch. The date at the 4 is another problem area, and this may be more of a personal nitpick. The date is small and rather unobtrusive, but I think the metallic frame on it is a little bit distracting. At least with this colorway, because it's the only silver thing on the dial. And as for the text, well, I actually really like the Aragon logo at the top. It may be a little bit large, but I've always liked that italic font, and I think it looks great in black against the yellow. Although the text on the bottom is another story, and here I think most of it is just unnecessary. And especially the professional text, as I'm not really sure it means anything. Now, in the world of watches, I think the Divemaster Evo is obviously an entry-level watch, which I think is apparent when you check out the price range. And in that price range, there are typically compromises that you have to live with. But despite my nitpicks when it comes to the design, I think overall this is still very impressive of what you're getting for 169 bucks. as when it comes to the build quality and the materials used, there's not a lot of compromises here. When it comes to Loom, I really wasn't sure what to expect here, as Loom was one of the big weak points on the 42mm version. But that really wasn't a problem with the Evo. When the lights go out, that larger-than-life presence comes to life in green. So initially, it's great, and as time passes, I think it becomes obvious that the hands and bezel have a nice thick application of Superluminova, as they not only keep up, but slightly outlast a Seiko Turtle. The only weak point I saw, and this is a little bit disappointing, is in those really cool 3D hour markers, as they did tend to fade out fairly early on. But depending on how they're actually made, this may not be surprising, as typically with the best loom, you have applied indices that are then filled up with a lot of luminous paint, and here it's just part of the material. So that is still one area they can improve on, and since those markers are kind of a newer thing, maybe they can work something out. But overall, I'd still say it's pretty good loom. As for the movement, we are looking at your standard Seiko NH35A, which is really what you'd expect, and even more importantly, what you want in this price range. Whereas the bracelet isn't necessarily something you'd expect, but it is what you want. 
What the bracelet lacks in flash or maybe originality, it more than makes up for with a really solid build quality. You have solid end links, solid links, and a mostly milled clasp. Plus, the tool watch aesthetic perfectly matches that of the case. Overall, it's a great bracelet for the price, and one I think people would be happy with in the long run. Personally, I would prefer it if there was a little bit of a taper, but I do know some people prefer to have this look. The only other issue I have isn't so much with the bracelet, but with the placement of the spring bars, as they're pretty close to the case and there's not a lot of clearance between them for other straps. You can still use aftermarket straps, but in order to do so, you need a curved or bent spring bar, which is what I used here. Now, when it comes to value, MSRP here is 300 bucks, but if there's one thing to know about Ergon, it's that some watches are always on sale. And for the Evo, the sale price is 169, which just like the 42 millimeter Dive Master, I think is an amazing price for what you're getting. As outside of AliExpress, you're lucky if you're getting Sapphire at this price, let alone a good bracelet and a ceramic bezel. So I think with this one, value really isn't even a question. What is, however, is how well you like the style, the design, and especially the size of the Dive Master 4 Evo. As it is a little bit different since Aragon always does their own thing. And when it comes to size, this may be on the smaller side for Aragon watches, but when you're looking at all the dive watches out there, it is still kind of in the medium range. And that's not going to be for everyone. And heck, just check out the comments down below. I'm sure there are a lot of people talking about this already. Now, personally, I still prefer the 42 millimeter just because I think it's much more comfortable on the wrist. But I gotta say, as a whole, I think the Dive Master 4 Evo is much more representative of what Aragon is all about, both in terms of value and bold design. And I think Aragon is really smart for making this one, as it's almost the perfect gateway watch into the world of Aragon. I think there are going to be plenty of people out there who are curious about different watch sizes, and at this great price, they're going to get one out of curiosity. At which point they get a taste of what Aragon is all about in a slightly smaller, more comfortable size. And after that, who knows, they might wind up ordering a 45. But what do you guys think about the Dive Master 4 Evo? Let me know down below. And if there are any other Aragon models you'd like to see, let me know that as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.